that's it. Can you confirm, please? Okay, now, now I see myself. Okay, so well, uh, uh, I still has has commented. I'm going to try make a follow up on how to integrate the spatial data in business processes. Uh, first of all, I, I will go very very fast to give you some background on the company I work for, not for commercial, but to let you know that we are a company, let's say, that have different businesses. One of them is the GIS, and the other one is e-government services, electronic uh, administration, and, and that kind of, of things, files, uh, and so on. So, uh, sorry, I think there are some problems with my mic. Let's see, go see my volume better now, too. Is it better? Okay, I hope so. Uh, I'll try to speak louder in, in any case. So the thing is that we have a strong uh, a strong background in the GIS and in general purpose for, for the government's uh, applications. And, uh, well, we work wor worldwide and we have realized uh, that there is a mis synchronization of uh, spatial and the non-spatial world. Okay. Uh, Traditionally, these have been very separated worlds. It's true that in the past five, 10 to five years, we have tried to integrate GIS in, in every place that the users are more, more and more aware of the, of the need of having the, the, GI, the GI information updated in their, in their processes. But the real, well, the real problem that we, we face everywhere is that still there is a, a big difference between between both worlds you know you go to a to a project and you have a, in a separate part the the, alpha, the non spatial data and then the spatial data and that's a, a really big problem for us because the, the spatial data that you actually have are inventories which are kind of photos uh, at, at a certain time that you have uh, a list of uh, licenses or a list of places or a list of whatever at a, at a given moment, but they do not remain alive because these uh, entities live in the non-spatial world and from time to time come to the spatial, yearly, mainly. So uh, we started uh, to think some time ago and on the need to integrate uh, these both worlds. Well, nothing, nothing new to you, but uh, we will tell you our our experience here and where we are. So, uh, what we did is to create kind of uh, kind of applications where the spatial data, uh, the, the spatial data, will be very, very, really easy to to manage. Okay, so uh, actually, all the users have uh, we have the opportunity to create their own layers and have them updated we can we gave them uh, the the abilities to to have the tools uh, have uh, tools have on to create layers to update them to give them uh, styles uh, to build uh, some tools specific for for their needs so they will be able these non-spatial users they will be able to manage their own spatial data of course everything uh, and this is very also linked with the with the other uh, with the other talk uh, also with only with OGC standards for following the standards we call an open source software so we created some platforms that evolved during time and uh, they had a lot of uh, a lot of, uh, of tools and capabilities. So we made a modular orientation where we they could easily uh, select what, what were the basic layers to add in a in a map, and also to to add the tools that they needed for a for a moment. So uh, we reduced, uh, even though they, it's quite simple to deploy a. For, for us, let's say for GIS people, it's quite simple to deploy a, a post GIS together with, a, let's say, a GIS server or a WMS or a WFS or, or whatever server, and then a map viewer with tools and so on. 
for these non-average GIS users, it, it is uh, a huge learning curve. So we, in our processes in the years, back in the years, we built uh, applications to try to make them publish the spatial data in three clicks, trying to avoid that the spatial data was uh, was uh, kind of photographs as we commented before, so they could live at the same time and they could be updated by the by the users themselves. But the the thing is that even though we we tried to do so, still there was a there was a, a learning curve for for them. Uh, to mention all that we provided to to manage the spatial data, uh, we made a, an API so the the applications could could integrate. We gave them lots of functionalities. I'll come to this uh, later, and with a very let's say simple or or a very classic uh, flavor with with all these technologies. We can go uh, from, from, let's say, from business to, to technology uh, as you as you prefer. Okay. So uh, as you as you desire. So in any in any time you can you can write and, and we can answer. So uh, we pro we provided this uh, the technology stack and built all these functionalities. We made them with these three clicks uh, approach to publish to publish layers, even in WMS or using vector data as PDF, also editing data, downloading WFS, editing with WFST, metadata, uh, mashups. You could embed your map wherever with the layers you wanted to. You as you could you can embed this. This is a HTML with JavaScript uh, at the end and CSS. So finally, we also gave them mobile apps to to fill work, so they could have a, a mobile application ready to go. Uh, we gave them the chance to to publish in in social networks and uh, even more uh, functionalities, styling high resolution printing search engines vector tiles i mentioned before uh, another and more others but but still they were separate works still they needed to go to the spatial part still they needed to get into a map they needed to draw they needed to edit they needed to to put the pieces together it uh, it uh, improved the, the situation because it, it spread the knowledge of the GIS, but uh, didn't solve the, the initial problem, the state of the problem at the beginning where these worlds were uh, completely different. Still, uh, they had separate life. And our main goal here and our difference from other approaches uh, was to join them together. And uh, so coming back to the to the initial uh, to the initial slide where we said we are a company focused in GIS but also in non-GIS uh, products, we realized that we had the, the problem and the solution inside the house. So uh, we started to work together not in the clients but in our own products to offer a different value to the to the clients by the integration of the spatial data in all the procedures and uh, and the the workflows that the rest of the applications were dealing with i mean when i'm referring to non gis uh, non gis uh, applications I mean for example for local entities licenses for I don't know for a bar a restaurant or a, let's say a public event whatever is a workflow and all that has a special a special address uh, has a, a street name has very very specific special data 
which uh, lived to lived in separate worlds. So for for our workflows, what we train now is to with all the tools that we have built during the time to manage the spatial data, integrate them in our own products. So uh, the clients themselves wouldn't have the chance to to avoid the GIS world. So uh, we incorporated all the all the tools and all the layers in the in this in this uh, tools specifically in, in one tool, which is uh, the creation of the forms. Uh, this is not GIS related, but uh, we integrated uh, in a specific in a, in a general purpose uh, application where you build some formularies to to the user, so they fill in their data, the address, where they want to ask something. Uh, so we integrated a map. We integrated street map reverse geocoding. It may seem simple things, but in the end, in the few years, well, a couple of years ago, people were not uh, feeling an, a normal, a normalized address. They did not have a reference street name, so they could type different streets. They could uh, even fail in the in the spelling. So in the end, uh, well, we will realize that the, the the GIS was needed and was needed specifically at that at that point at that time when we you are when you are uh, creating the the data, no matter spatial or non-spatial, because it's all the same the, the same entity. So uh, finally, we gave them the, the possibility to locate the positions on a on a map, and then and then uh, we have uh, noticed. It's a quite recent project, and this is why we are presenting it here. Uh, and finally, we we came with a with a product that uh, has really liked to the to the customers because uh, they feel that they have everything managed in a in, in a single point, and uh, and they all the information can be uh, changed live. So each time they provide with a, uh, a restaurant license. The layer of restaurants so in uh, in the city changes as the as the license is approved or rejected or or whatever. So uh, this was the real game changer for for us. We had lots of, of tools, uh, lots of ways to make maps very 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 easy. But in the end, uh, we needed to we needed to integrate uh, them and was not an actual integration. So uh, I think I'm okay with the time and six minutes left. I'm just going to show you a, a couple of light things and, and a small video to, to let you know uh, this this evolution. So so you are aware of the of the changes that we have made, which I insist it it may seem very very simple, but it has made uh, really really a difference. So in the in the past. We gave the users the possibility to to build a map. Well, you upload a layer, you connect to a database, you add a, you add a, a layer here, you mark or unmark the layer you want. You can put, add or remove uh, the buttons you want, whatever. Really, really easy to the users. But uh, the thing is what I commented before, it didn't work. It didn't work as much as we wanted. Okay, it works worked very very well because it was a a, a really le a leap for the for the users, but uh, didn't work in the in the way we wanted. So or we expected to or we were <laughs> looking for. So uh, what we what we made uh, then was to to move it to a, another to another application to include it embed it as a as a as a part of a, a workflow. So uh, uh, in order to avoid running out of time, let me move here. This is what I, I wanted to show you. This is an application where you are building a form, okay, for a, for a specific purpose, no matter what. Then uh, you have a control that you say, 
it's an evolution the, of the map. Then you have a control where you say, okay, I have the location of a, a restaurant pre precisely. So uh, then you you add it, you put the the map that you have also that you have created here. You have several several maps to to choose. Okay, you put the map there, and uh, then you sorry then you add it here as a as a component. And you can also interact with the rest of the form by adding expressions on a JSON file or the info of the of a of a WFS request that you made. And you can you can put a query to extract certain property from a GeoJSON that is returned. Okay. So, and then you fill another part of the form with that information. So uh, as you type in or you put a point on the map, uh, non-spatial data, traditionally known as it, is filled. So uh, we can see another example. This is how we build the, the form. Let me show you how we how the form is then then presented you have the usual uh, license request for for restaurant then you then you have it there your map as you configured before then you put the name that you put that you put certain certain aspects of the of the license and finally you what you do is to to locate and put the and put the the correct address you look for your own address, which previously you had to. What you were doing was to to type it free, which was a mess in the end, and then you have this this information right from a street map, from an official street map, put on the on the map, and then you can then verify. Then you have a lot of info there. So uh, the goal here, uh, as I commented, it, it is a very, very simple use case. This is not a uh, rocket science, but uh, believe me, that is a, an evolution for the way that the, that the non-spatial applications behave with spatial data. And uh, finally, you, well, you can see how it is integrated. There is a special part in the, in the application which is called the well, G1 spatial. And then you have all the all the layers. This one, this was one of the ones that we have been editing with the with the forms uh, updated on on real time. So what you have finally is all the licenses that are being on a workflow correctly positioned on, on a map with uh, the real data with no mistakes and a, li a layer that is alive uh, in real time and updated by completely non uh, non gis users they do not know what is behind they only type the street name or they paint on the on the screen they put the point in the place and, and that's it so well, this is this is it. Uh, very, I'm trying to go very, very fast, but I hope I, I explained the the point. Okay, so this is how ha we have integrated the spatial data. No very fancy functionalities, but very simple, but very 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 effective for the for the use cases that we have that we have faced with our our customers. So this is it till on time, I think. Cannot hear you. Better to unmute. Thank you very much. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you for your impressive talk, uh, the amazing platform you, you presented to us. And uh, I heard it's also raining in South Africa, but uh, it stopped here. So you probably can better hear me now. Uh, there's a question that came up and um, the question is, when integrating GIS and non-GIS workloads, what role do unified data management platforms play? Have you considered using a unified database for GIS and non-GIS business data? Yes, we have tried everything in, 
we have tried several several approaches there. We have a face it that, um, for example, you can do it. Uh, maybe the 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 audience is pointing to, for example, it, it can be as simple as creating a, a layer in a, a table in a database with the spatial data and then making the the non spatial the non spatial uh, application to populate that table in the post GIS. It, it can be as simple as filling all filling fields in a in a database and forget about the these tools. Uh, and I agree, depending on the depending on the case, it can be very simple. But the thing is that we we during time we have evolved these tools to provide the users real well uh, powerful uh, tools and uh, the role that this platform to to manage all the data has played here is to to also engage a little bit the the, the customer because uh, we provide them very very specific tools maybe this is very very simple but once they they have the the platform for a simple use case they see the potential of it and they start using it uh, for a general purpose even for the the very very specific EIS so I will say that in some cases we have started with a bottom to top with very specific use cases, maybe with a only with a table and then the platform and so on. And in other cases, we have started directly with the platform because the user has had that need, and in the end they have integrated. So depending on the case, it has a, the platform may have a, a different role, but for us always. We have always tried to, to put it there because in, in the end, it is very, very useful for the users. Okay, thank you. Um, I have another question. You're, you're using a lot of open source stack in your things and you, you talked about that these are very simple uh, functionality that you offer. But um, is there any drawback to the projects uh, you have when using uh, the things? Um, how do you manage that? Uh, that would be really interesting, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Indeed. Uh, well, I have not gone into the into the details, but if you see, for example, for example, we have uh, created a, a little small open source project here. Which is my, my pair five, which is has it, its own GitHub repository under under this, and you can you can put it there. When we find any issue or when we have any need or when we fix any issue or anything that well, we are in contact with the the respective communities, so we can well have that feedback to to them or even contribute with a with a commit respecting all, all the all the needs and the timeline of the of the project but but yes in, in one hand we we revert we try to give it back by contributing to the project as as we are able to to find some enhancements or we produce some enhancements and in the other hand we we have created on top of this another another project for whoever who wants to to use it okay so and uh, one one more thing, sorry. All we do in the end is also open source because all we do is for the for the government. And here in Spain we have a very good policy, let's say, that you have to provide all the sources, and then it becomes open source and it is offered to to the community. So all that you have seen is in their respective client and and it's part of the let's say the 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 entity and public. Perfect. Perfect. I, I'm happy now with that. <laughs> Thank you. Another question came up. Um, the question is, when integrating a GIS workflow, do you find that it generally just needs to be simplified? Or do non-GIS users need completely different workflows? Uh, again, it, it depends on the case. There are very, very complex. I, I've faced, for example, for hydrology, they, they needed the extreme uh, processes to to give some permissions to extract water from a place uh, calculations so they needed a lot so the the logic was put in the gis part and they need very specific tools 
and probably they needed also to simplify the, their approach but the the real deal was in the in the GIS part uh, I have seen the the other way around when the users are not very GIS enthusiastic they they just uh, they are fine if they have an address and they have a point and they say wow that's that's what I wanted but depending on, on where they they are coming from and their and their business you can face the the both the both extremes you you need a well really really tough uh, tools to decide on your workflow uh, you need uh, just to to have a point in a in a place so we have faced everything as, as i guess you <laughs> have done in, in life so. yeah yeah. I'm I, I'm laughing because I I know the game and uh, the other the opposite is when people from non GS came uh, come over and see and they 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 told me oh you're a GS uh, guy it's it's always easy because you have these marvelous pictures on on your application yeah. <laughs> which really helps yeah, <laughs> and I don't know uh, how to say in English but they say oh little little maps uh, brochures you do brochures you do yes you do touristic maps and things like that yeah yeah cool okay so get your kudos in the chat thank you very much for thank your you. presentation and uh, for the listeners we have three minutes to switch over and then we proceed with the next talk